Welcome people of planet Earth and all planets beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh and today we're going to talk about how to identify vintage Logo 7 and Logo Athletic vintage garments. So let's get into it. So Logo 7 was founded all the way in 1971 making sportswear for local, regional and eventually professional sports teams and colleges. In the 80s, it was sold to the owner of the Indiana Pacers, and in 1992, was sold again to the Toltex brand. Now, from the mid-80s to the early 90s, the sportswear heyday was upon us. We went from just producing jerseys and maybe a t-shirt with the name of your team on them to big ornate jackets with lots of designs on them with lots of different variations and merchandise for all of these professional teams. So between the late 80s and the early 90s is what some call the sportswear war where brands like Starter, Champion, Apex One and Logo 7 all competed to create the officially licensed products of these professional teams. So at the time, many of these professional teams actually had the ability to negotiate individual contracts with any one of these uh, manufacturers. And so that meant that Logo 7 might make the officially licensed product for the Chiefs, or Apex One would make the officially licensed product and uh, on-field material for the Dallas Cowboys and and there was a hodgepodge and a lot of different contracts and a lot of different manufacturers producing for many of these professional leagues. Now later on as we move into the 90s and the early 2000s these contract negotiations would end and the league would negotiate for all of the teams and for all of the jerseys. But during this wild wild west time there were a lot of contracts given out and a lot of different companies producing officially licensed materials for lots of different sports teams. So after being sold to Toltex in 1992, Logo 7 would actually sort of launch Logo Athletic as a sort of companion brand to their mainline Logo 7 brand. These would do a lot of really radical things, in my opinion, probably some of the best work that the company ever did. Now in 1998, the original owners of Logo 7 attempted to repurchase and buy back the company from Toltex, and they did so for almost $100 million. Unfortunately, as the sportswear market would soon sink to the depths, the company went bankrupt in 2000, and by 2003 had all but disappeared after being bought by Reebok, Adidas, and they were no longer anywhere to be found. Now, after 30 years of production, Logo Athletic and Logo 7 gave us some incredible designs, specifically their shark tooth design, their spike design, and their paint streak design that they put on hats and jackets and other merchandise. These are some of the most iconic pieces and the most collectible pieces that you will find within the Logo 7 and Logo Athletic portfolio. Now let's turn our attention to how to identify vintage Logo 7 and Logo Athletic garments. And there's sort of a simple answer here. And that's because since the company folded and pretty much disappeared by 2003, just about everything that you find that's branded Logo 7 or Logo Athletic is going to be vintage. Now, if your goal is to find out whether or not your Logo 7 or Logo Athletic piece is vintage, being 20 years or older, well, it's pretty simple. You can pretty much be confident that anything that you have that has that branding is probably over 20 years old and technically vintage. But that doesn't necessarily narrow it down uh, after 30 years of production, there's a lot of different eras of this company that you might try to uh, pinpoint uh, your garment being from. So let's talk about some of the ways that we can do that. Now it is important to remember with Logo 7 and Logo Athletic, we're probably not going to be able to pinpoint exact dates. None of that sort of uh, logistical information was really kept on the garment itself, but some of these things can help us get a general idea and narrow it down to a smaller window. Now with most vintage garments, the care tags are where we're going to start because they can give us a lot of information as to when or approximately when our items were produced. Here are some of the earliest Logo 7 care tags that were used in the late 70s and the early 80s. You can see these here. They are relatively simple, just sort of one color, like a brown color on a white or beige tag. This is the some of the earliest Logo 7 items. So if you have a Logo 7 piece that has this tag or any of these tags, you're looking at the early to uh, 80s, 
to into the 70s for those tags. In the mid to late 70s and pretty much on through the rest of the lifetime of Logo 7, you're going to see this tag right here. This tag is perhaps the most common Logo 7 tag you will find, as when they started using this tag is when sales really started to pick up and the sportswear market blew up and was a very hot thing for quite a while. This tag has multiple colors and has the Logo 7 logo that would sort of last the rest of their life. Now, one thing to note about Logo 7 garments is they were almost entirely produced in the USA. There are some exceptions. There are a few things like some hats and some jackets that were produced overseas, but for the most part, lots of their t-shirts and such were produced in America in Indianapolis, and they were very proud of that. Their location in Indiana actually was really helpful for them to be able to produce things very quickly, like a Super Bowl champion t-shirt or a division champion t-shirt. Now, next up are the Logo Athletic tags. Logo Athletic only being formed around 1994 and lasting until 2003 or so really only has a handful of tags so there's already a pretty fairly narrow window for the era in which logo athletic tags would actually exist the first one is this one right here which i believe is probably the earliest of the logo athletic tags uh, definitely still got some of that logo 7 vibe and the later stuff that probably happened around the uh turn of the millennium in 98, 99, and 2000, and onwards looks like this. It's actually black tag that seems to be most common. Now, I will say you should remember that there are so many exceptions to these rules uh, that you might find a tag uh, from that, you know, mostly appears in the early 90s. You might find it in the late 90s and vice versa. Uh, these are just sort of generalities that we have found after handling lots and lots of these garments. Now let's talk about one of Logo 7's most important products, and those are jerseys, most specifically NFL jerseys. Uh, they did produce for a few other uh, of the professional leagues, but mostly for the replica jerseys they produced for the NFL. And one way to do that is simply to look at the style of jersey. This has the older logo athletic tag, and you can see it's far more perforated, definitely more boxy than the later uh, iterations of the logo athletic tag. You see the black here, and this is a less perforated uh, m much more uh, standard jersey that you're probably familiar with today. This would have been the newer style jersey from the late 90s, and this would likely be from the mid 90s to the early 90s. Logo 7 jerseys would be very similar to this. Uh, these jerseys could have been produced all the way into the 80s, into the 70s. You might find some really old with really old original tags that we saw earlier in the video. But these are much more perforated, a lot more boxy in their style, and they have the Logo 7 tag. These boxy jersey styles would certainly put these jerseys in the earlier category, 80s and early 90s, as the NFL began to switch to more solid materials in the late 90s and early 2000s. Logo 7 did not produce jerseys for the NBA, though they do have some merchandise looking uh, jerseys that are not official or replicas, just general merchandise. Now the next method that we can use to determine the age of our Logo Athletic or Logo 7 products is sports history. There are certain things that happen in sports history that affect the merchandise, like name changes. For instance, when the Houston Oilers moved to Tennessee, and then Tennessee Oilers became the Tennessee Titans in 1999. Anything that has Tennessee Oilers is probably from that 99 to 97 period, and anything after that says Tennessee Titans is from the 99 and onward period and thus the same for the Houston Oilers. Or like when the Bullets became the Wizards in 1997, anything with the Bullets on it is going to be older than 1997, and anything with the Wizards on it is going to be post-1997. So you can use different things like this uh, to determine, generally speaking, when your garment probably was made. There are some cases like with the Toronto Raptors or the Orlando Magic in the NBA when they were uh, introducing them into the league, they produced garments a couple years prior just to sort of build up the fan base and get some hype behind those teams. But generally then, you're only going to be within a couple years range. So Logo Athletic and Logo 7 have had many iconic designs over the years. And some of those designs, like the Shark Tooth design and some of these other ones, are being reused by like brands like Mitchell and Ness and Fanatics. So when you're out there, look and make sure that your garment is not something from a more recent time uh, and that it is in fact 
an authentic Logo Athletic and Logo 7 piece. So if you're buying the Shark Tooth, the Paint Streak, or whatever it may be, make sure that the garment has Logo 7 or Logo Athletic somewhere on it to be sure that you're buying an authentic garment. So I hope that information is helpful to you and it inspires your search for vintage Logo 7 and Logo Athletic designs because they are, in my opinion, some of the coolest sportswear out there. They're one of my favorite brands. Starter and Champion, those are guys are cool, but Logo Athletic had something going for it. And whenever you can find it out in the thrift or in a secondhand shop, it's always awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Check out our playlists for more information on how to identify vintage clothing. And we'll see you guys later. Peace.